Hi everyone, uh, sending you greetings from London. And um, Mark, when we found out that the memorial is uh, tonight, Mark asked me if I could send a, a message uh, for the memorial. And I've been thinking as a, as a writer, how do you, how do you put into words a friendship which has been so much a definition of my life? And I thought it's absolutely impossible. There are, there are not enough words to, to quantify it. But then I thought, what was the, the important aspects of that friendship? And for me, it was the, the joy, happiness, and laughter that it brought. I think to, and I knew him as homily. I knew that he had all these different names. You know, Bob to some, you know, so on your name, but for me, it was always homily. Um, I think for homily, I occupied the slightly mad uh, younger sister <laughs> that he wanted to protect. And so, so many of the, the things that, um, that I reflected back on just reminded me of that. You know, I mean, one in particular, I remember this mad journey to um, a house, a beautiful house in Devon in the, the dead of night um, because I'd just broken up with a boyfriend, but his parents had um, given us the keys <laughs> to their um, summer house, you know, my life. And so I was sitting in the, the passenger seat in floods of tears while he was uh, trying to navigate these tiny Devon roads. And we um, eventually um, found ourselves behind a uh, parked car where the owner of that car had um, just um, hit a rabbit, um, but had not killed it. And so to put the rabbit out of his misery, uh, he had gotten out of his car, picked up the rabbit. He was bashing the rabbit with his cane. You know, by which point we got there, he was covered in blood, but he was smiling and laughing and cheering us on to, to, to sort of wave us past his car. And um, it looked like a scene from a Stephen King uh, novel. And we just kept laughing about it for the whole rest of the weekend, completely forgot about the boyfriend, you know, and, and, and that was always homily's effect on my life. I remember another time that um, I couldn't get, um, it was a point at which I wasn't getting commissions as a writer, so I was depressed about it. And he said, as he, he always invariably did, he sort of like um, appeared in London, had to go to Cannes for a meeting at Midan, the music festival there. And he said, look, come along, you'll have a great time and everything. And so I, I came and, um, Midam is where the music producers, um, um, musicians as well, uh, mainly those who are selling content, um, you know, and, and hang out in this beautiful city. So I was there and this um, producer from Burkina Faso would come to uh, sell content from his company, um, also had another agenda. He decided he was also looking for a wife. And for some reason, he thought I was a viable candidate, but he felt that he had to negotiate with, with the male in my family, and somehow he decided that was homely. So throughout the week that we were there, he kept appearing, having uh, coffees, and kept saying, well, okay, um, that he had four or five companies, that, um, and, and Basically, the bride price kept going up and up and up, and I'm like, I'm saying, no, this is not how things are done. Until finally, um, I went to get coffee, and it was on the last day. And uh, when I was walking back, I saw him stop in the seat and next to the homily, so I sort of hid behind a plant. And he said, okay, I have a herd of cattle, about 200. That's my final offer. And just as I'm going to breath to say, no, 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 it's not. I can see him calculate in his head, I wonder how much I get for the 200 head of cattle. And then he said, no, 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 no. And so all the way back, I kept saying, you thought about it. You were thinking about it. So no, he, for me, he reflected so much, which is magical in the world. And whenever, ever, ever I would get confused or perplexed about what was going on around me, I could always ring him 
and uh, and say, please give me some insight. And I'll never forget when I was there this the most recent time in November, and we were just talking, and I went to do it again. And he said, No, 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 Beth, I think I think you've got this now. And it was his way of, I think, saying, Okay, you'll be okay. Anyway, I I just think he was the most remarkable human being that I've ever met. And in, I'm a practicing Asian Buddhist, and in Buddhism, we feel that life is eternal, nothing's ever lost, and, and that even though the, the form changes, that person will always be with us. So I'd like to think that his love and, and just faith in all of us will always, 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 always surround us. And and Cass, most of all, you know, and please know Cass, he was so incredibly proud of you. And um, and I promise to always be there for you. And lastly, I just wanted to read a poem that was a friend of mine shared with me after he found out, you know, about homily. And it's just so beautiful. And it's uh, I like the memory of me to be a happy one. I like to leave an afterglow of smiles when day is done. I like to leave an echo of whispering softly down the waves of happy times and laughing times and bright and sunny days. I like the tears of those three to dry before the sun of happy memories that I leave behind when the day is done. So everyone, thank you so much for, um, for being there for him. You know, he's looking down, I know, and smiling. Bye. <laughs>